In this video, we're going to use the CLA or Chris Lord Algae drums plugin to take this drum track from this. To this. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to take an in-depth look at the CLA drums plugin available on its own or in a bundle. And by the way, if you want to save 10% on all Waves plugins and bundles, there will be a link in the description below. Also in this video, we're going to analyze this plugin and see exactly what it does. But let's start off with the interface. And right now we have it on this kicks track. We're gonna get more into this here in a minute. But what this single uh, kicks track is here, okay, this track right here, is a combination of all of these kick tracks right here, all of these here. So here's a kick track up here. This is just the kick in, right? Down here's the kick out. Okay. And we have, there's a U87 track right there. That's one kick drum. Then there's another kick drum right here and right here, different kick drum. So it's a two kick drum kit. And these three tracks here are bounced down to this one single track. And then these two tracks right here were bounced down to this single track. And then these two tracks right here were bounced down. Just play this here. Right. Those were then bounced down to this single kick track right here. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is because the Chris Lord Algae drums plugin and all of the uh, plugins in this uh, bundle are stereo plugins, meaning there's no mono component. Now there is a mono to stereo component. We'll go in here, go to waves audio. And right here is CLA drums mono to stereo. There's no mono to mono. Okay. So these are really meant to be on stereo tracks, or if you have a mono track, that's going to widen it to a, uh, a stereo track. So stereo track. Now look at this here. CLA drums stereo. Now the reason for this is that these plugins and the drums plugin here is meant for a multi-track group of all of your drums. So whenever you're recording drums, you're gonna have multiple microphones on each drum, probably. So what you would want to do first is bounce all of those down to a single track, or you could create a output here, which we're gonna do later on all of these toms, for example and we could bus all of these to a single aux track, for example, okay? We'll get to that later on once we get to, uh, to mixing. So let's go over the interface, and of course the best way to learn the interface is to actually see it work, right? So here we are on just the kicks. Right now it's bypassed. Let me come in here to load, and we'll do a full reset. Up here is where you will find all of your presets as well, if you wanna use those. All right, so bypass right now, everything is at the center. Turn it on. And the first thing you notice is there is processing going on even without us making any adjustments. I could even come in here and turn all of these off here. Bypass it, play back, turn it on. There's still processing going on. So this is the default setting uh, for, for Chris, his, his starting point. So even when you have everything off, there's still processing going on. And you'll see that once we analyze this plugin, there is processing going on on these different modes, even when everything is bypassed in the plugin. So even on snare, right? There's a difference there as well. All right, so up here at the top of the interface, we have our different drum modes, now obviously, you want to match this up to the type of material you're working on. So kick would go to kick, snare would go to snare, so on and so forth. But of course you can experiment uh, however you want. If you want to use toms on snare or overhead or room on snare or on kick, whatever, you can of course do that. But these are set up in a way to make it easy to mix exact drums. So there's different EQ curves and uh, you know compression going on and whatnot. All right, but we're on kick here. That's how you change your modes. Use your mouse wheel if you want with that selected as well. Down here we have our input synths. So being that we're on kick, we'll leave it on kick, play back. 
So for our input, we're aiming for yellow. If red sounds better, throw it up to the red. If green sounds better, put it in the green, but overall, we're kind of looking for yellow. So just that first. Then down here, we have a phase switch. So if your microphones, you know, that you use to record your drums, you're having issues, you have your phase switch right within the interface. Not really gonna hear anything in solo, hear that. I don't need to uh, flip the phase on this one, so we'll just leave it like it is. Then we have here in the stereo component, a left right knob. So if something is not balanced correctly, you can see the output over here. You can adjust that right here, okay? But this is already balanced just fine. Just alt click to put that back to the uh, center there. And then turn all of these on. We have our bass, our treble, our compression, reverb, and a gate. And over here on cowbell, we have a delay instead of a gate. Now cowbell is used for more than just cowbell. It's used for symbols, individual symbols, right? Maybe a symbols bus. Uh, for hi-hat, for anything, uh, anything like that. All right, so put it back here. Let's start here with the bass. We have three options, sub, lower, or upper, and this is controlling that low EQ. And each of these are different shapes. So we'll start there, playback, increase, decrease, switch the uh, type, All right? You can also cycle through those by using this arrow or click directly within the interface to turn things on or off. All right, so set up the low end to something that sounds good. I want a bit more power, so that sounds pretty good there. Bypass it, back on, all right. Onto the treble. Pull it in or pull it out. Bite or top. A little bit higher in the roof, even higher up there. Again, pull that in or out. And it's just uh, that easy because each of these different modes are set up with frequency ranges here in the EQ that work perfectly for each, uh, for each drum. So it's pretty quick to mix. You could of course do all of this with several plugins. You could use an EQ, a compressor, a reverb, a gate, right? As a chain, or maybe you want to use something like, you know, the Sheps uh, channel or any sort of, uh, channel strip plugin and you could uh, do that as well. But the cool thing about this again is all of those EQ curves uh, are already set for us. So that sounds pretty good here. We come down here and look at our microphones, pull some of that out. So we're room microphone down there. All right, on to compression. Back on solo. Again, three different types, push, spank, and wall. And of course, the output is going down because we're compressing, right, that signal. So we can make up for that over here on the output. Whatever sounds best to you. For this, I don't really need it compressed that much. Pull this back down a bit. This sounds pretty good there. Then we have reverb. Now you might not be using much reverb on your kick drum, but you have it here if you want it. Again, different types up here. Studio, club, hall, or off. In this case, I don't really want any at all. Yeah, I don't want, don't want any at all in that. Bypass. Back on, already sounds better. Then we have a gate. Now on this track here, you can see it's pretty clean, right? This kick track right there. I don't have any bleed in this uh, microphone here. Now if you did have bleed, this is where the gate comes in. And the gate also helps to sort of make things decay, you know, faster if they're ringing out uh, too long. But you'll hear a little bit of it here. So pull it up. It's 
a soft gate or a hard gate. Right, it doesn't sound good on this track. I don't really need a gate on it. But just set it wherever you need it. In this case, I don't even think I need it. We're basically, basically done here. So we have a little bit of bleed in here, it seems like. So it takes it up there. Just a little bit. So there you go. That's the full mix of our kick in this case. Pretty quick to do there. There we go. So bypass it. Cool. So I'm going to save this, put into preset menu as, we'll just call it. There we go. So again, we could have used presets if we wanted to. Hit our load, kick, cycle through them. That's pretty close to what I had. Okay, but we'll load that one back up. And bypass it. All right, so much better. Of course, we have more mixing to do, but we'll do that after we analyze the plugin. But that is the interface and the basics of how to use the CLA drums plugin. All right, so let's go ahead and analyze this plugin to see what is actually doing. If you're not interested, you can skip past this part. There will be time code in the description below for each uh, section here. All right, so here we have our analyze track already set up. And I have the emo generator on there. We have the CLA drums right there. And we have our PAZ analyzer right there. All, all of these are uh, from Waves turn all of these on. Actually, I'll bypass the CLA drums for now. We're going to turn on the generator. It's going to make some noise. We'll turn down the master because we don't actually need to hear it that much. So that's pretty good right there. Take a look at our frequency response over here in the uh, analyzer. Now what I'm going to do, you come in here, I'm going to turn all of this off. All of this is set to default. Everything is off. Okay, now watch what happens to the analyzer there whenever I turn this on. So I'm gonna take it off a of bypass. Ready, watch this. Boom, you see that? Everything is off, but it still has an effect even with everything within the plugin uh, being bypassed, okay? Same thing if it was on snare. I can reset this here. As you can see, bypass it. Our curve is different, okay? So we'll start here with the kick. What we're mainly interested in is what are our curves for our EQ here. So let me go ahead and just turn all of these on here. We're still in the middle there. As soon as I turn on the reverb, you can see we widen things out a bit there. You can see widen them up more, put club on there. Gets a bit wider, hull, maybe a little bit wider, different sort of sound there. Not really interested in that. That's pretty basic stuff. Let's just turn that off. Gate, you're not really gonna hear much of this. We don't really need to see it. Uh, but as I pull that up, of course, it's gating off the sound that's below our uh, threshold there. Hopefully you know what a gate is. Turn it off. Same thing for compression. You can see it pulls everything sort of together. All right. Turn this down a bit. But the main thing we want to see are the curves. So let's start here on the bass. Again, we're on the kick. Let's start with sub. We'll pull this up. Now look what happens over here in the analyzer. You see that boost we get right around, it looks like about 68 or so. This whole area right here is boosted up. Pull it down. You can see how that affects the curve. So this is set up specifically for kick. Obviously you can use this profile on any instrument that you want, but we can see 
the exact curves by uh, uh, using this method here. So let's go to lower, and you're going to see this move up a little bit. Boom. You see that? So now we're sort of peaking a bit here. We still have a peak here, but now we have another peak up here at around 113 or so. All right? Pull that down. Go back to sub. Go to upper. You can see how that's affecting things. So I'll pull upper all the way up. Back to lower. Back to upper. Now upper is, you know, around this area up here now. So that's our EQ curve for the kick. You can actually see how that affects the actual sound. Again, you could do all of this stuff with a channel strip or separate plugins, but the good thing about uh, plugins like this is the EQ curves, the compression, things like that are already set up to work perfectly for, in this case, uh, for drums. Let's turn this off. Go up here to treble now. Look at the bite shape. So go up, and you saw that really raise up right up here in the uh, top section, like a shelf. It's pulling all of this area up, somewhere from a thousand or so, all the way up to past 16. Lower it, pulls it down, this entire area. Go to top. Now it looks like we have a really wide bell shape here. It's kind of what it looks like to me. And in case you're really, really new and don't know what I mean by shape, let's come in here and we'll grab Waves Audio and let's go to Q10 which was actually the first available uh, EQ plugin, commercially available plugin. It used to look like that there. So by shape, I mean like this, right? That's our EQ shape, right? And you can, of course, adjust the gain, the frequency, how wide that bell is. So what I'm saying, a really wide bell, it's a very wide bell shape up here. All right, let's get rid of that. So again, the top, really wide bell. That's what it looks like to me. Back to bite. You can see the differences there. And then roof. And that's way up here. So you can see the different shape now. Okay. And pull that down. So that is what this plugin is actually doing. The actual shapes, the frequencies that it is manipulating. So we'll run through the rest of these really quick. Go to snare. We'll start on treble in this case, why not? Come to bite, pull that down, pull it up. So in this case, you can see raising from a thousand to past 16 K there. Really boosting all that up, maybe even lowering some here. Maybe a little, maybe. Go to top. Now we're centered around, it looks like 35, 36 or so. Pull some out. Let me go to roof. Again, we're way up top here. But we're affecting a pretty wide range. All this area right here. With that setting. On the snare and the treble. Turn it off. Come here to the bass control for the EQ. For the snare, raise this up. Now we're centered somewhere around 125. Up and down. Go to lower. That's going to raise it up a bit. Now we're coming somewhere up here, raising this whole area up on the lower setting. As you can see, it's much higher now, uh, much higher in the uh, in the uh, frequency range uh, is what I mean. Okay, and then the upper part, again, it raises it up a bit more. You can see how that's affecting this entire area now. And peaking somewhere up here now. So you can get a good thwack with that setting there. On to the toms. Start with the bass in this case. Go to sub, pull this down, pull it up. All this low end content right there. Centered somewhere down here with a, looks like a shelf perhaps. To lower. Now lower is gonna raise it up a little bit in the, in the uh, frequency. As you can see that there. And then upper pushes it up a little bit more. You can see the differences there. This entire area here is being affected as well as the very, very low end there. On to the treble. Start with bite. Again, we're raising 
a big area here, large area, go to top, get in the center somewhere around here. You can see that there. Good for getting some of that stick noise in there. And roof, again, sort of the same shape, pretty close, looks like, to kick, but of course, there's a different profile overall in the kick. So kick, you see, somewhere between where we at here, about 350 is pulled out, whereas on toms, it's not. All right, go through these pretty quick now. Turn this one off. Start with the overhead and the low end and the sub. Pull that down. You can see what's pulling down or pulling up. Lower. Raises that up a little bit more, that peak. And then upper. You saw that push a little bit up here now. Turn it off. On to treble. Bite. Again, this entire area. Being pulled up, top, a little bit different. So bite, looks like we're still pulling in some down here too. Switch that to top. See this area here dips down. Now it's focused up here more. And then roof, now we're just sort of focused up here. You can see that there. And then room, stay here on treble for now. On to bite, pull it up, pull it down. You can see that there. Top. Go back to overhead. See a little bit of a different curve between these two. Room with the uh, top selected is a little bit lower whenever we pull all of that uh, down. Way up here. See the curve difference there? Slight, but... It does make a difference. And the roof, you're really focused on this upper end right here. Do the low end here real quick. Just see those shapes. Here's the lower shape and the upper shape there. Cowbell, base, pull that down, pull it up here on sub, put it on lower, moves it up here a little bit more. And then upper really pushes us around here, which is about the low end that you would want to hit for that hi-hat if you want to pull that in or pull it out. Turn that off. Onto the treble. Here's bite. Again, looks kind of like a, a shelf filter there, pulling a lot of that up. Top. You can focus more around this area right here. And then roof, focus more up here, way up here now. All right, so that is your EQ shapes uh, that are in the CLA drums plugin. Turn that off. Now we'll go ahead and mix these drums. All right, let's go ahead and mix these drums. We already have the kick we did previously. But before we actually get to mixing them, we need to come in here and pan things around, right? Just to make sure we have everything set up correctly here. So we have our kick done. Come down here to our snares. Now in this case, again, like our kick, I have separate microphones on the snare here. Now all of these have already been bounced down to this single track right here. But here's a, a side microphone. There's a bottom microphone there, top microphone there, some bleed in that, and a bottom microphone there. So all of this has already been bounced down to one track in this case. Now you don't have to do it this way. We could bust all of this out to uh, an aux track or something and keep playing from all of these individual tracks. But in this case, I've gone ahead and bounced this down to a single stereo track. So let's go ahead and work on the snare. And in this case, because again, this track here is the combination of all of these, I don't need to hear these here. Now, if you wanted to, 
You could, of course, EQ all of these mics separately with any EQ that you want. You could even use the CLA drums plugin on each of these. But again, the CLA plugins here are really meant for your multi-track uh, masters, if you will, of each, uh, each separate drum. But you could do that if, uh, if you want. So let's go ahead and load up CLA drums. These are really, really quick to mix with, especially if you're not explaining everything along the way. You could mix an entire track, a drum track in you know five, six, seven minutes pretty quickly here. So switch it to snare, obviously. Listen to that. Maybe switch it to toms. Overheads, let's pull this up. Put it on snare and go ahead and mix. What do you want? I think for this a bit there, now for the bite or the uh, top end, there's top end. So what do I want? Do I want more of that thwack? Do I want it to cut through? What exactly am I looking for here? Bite is going to be a bit lower on the spectrum. I think top works good there. But again, as I mentioned earlier, let me come in here real quick and do a little bit more mixing here. So my toms, I've already panned pretty well. High tom all the way down to a low floor tom. We have two of those. Those are already panned. Levels are set OK for now. A little bit loud on the hi-hat. Then we have all of our cymbals here. And just like our kick and our snare, I actually have a cymbal track that's already been bounced out to all of my cymbals. Now, you don't have to do this again. We're going to look at the toms here in a minute and show you a different way you could uh, do this. But in this case, I have all of these different cymbals already bounced out and panned correctly on this track right here. Right. So I already have width. I already have everything set up. I didn't need to EQ any of these individually. So those are fine. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and mute all of these here. There we go. Okay, that's good enough for uh, for now. Back up here to our snare. And let's go ahead and keep going here. Good level. Compress it. We'll compress it a little. Now reverb, maybe a little. Pull that gate down so that reverb rings out longer. So up here it cuts off. I think studio works good for that. Just a bit. Now I can gate that off if I want. Or hard gate. But I want this to ring out. So we get a little bit of bleed here. You can... Right in there. I'm going to gate a little bit. Put that gate back on soft. And there we go. We have our snare done. Back on. Okay. All right. Still have levels to adjust, of course. Just depends on how you like to uh, balance uh, things out. I happen to like a lot of kick in uh, in my track. We're gonna do the toms a little bit differently here. So I have all of these individual tracks of toms, and I could, if I wanted to, again, place 
the CLA drums plugin on each of these tracks, but I don't want to do that in this case. Now, if I have some EQ that I want to do to these beforehand, again, I would come in here and just grab an EQ and go ahead and EQ things individually. Then I could record all of that to a single track or do what we're going to do now. So instead of bouncing these out to a single track like we did our snare and our kicks and our cymbals, we're going to bust this out or send it all to a different track. So select our top track here in Pro Tools, Shift, Select, all of those. Now I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift and click my output here on this first track. I can release those buttons, come down here to New Track, and Stereo is what we want. Aux is fine. Again, I could do audio track and record all of these, but I don't want to record them in this case. We're going to do an aux. We're going to call this Tom's. Create that. And here's our new track. You can see all of these tracks now. Tom's, 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 Tom's. Automatically routed all of those into this one track. Put this down here. Let me change the color so I know... It's a master track there. Okay, now what I might want to do, is if I solo this aux now, and I play, let me come up here. Our toms are being triggered, of course, being hit, but we're not hearing anything in our uh, tom track. So what I'll do now, let me select all these again. There we go. And in this case, I'll hold down Shift, Alt, and Control, and click the solo button. So that way, those can't uh, be turned off and they'll continually come out of our toms track. Okay, so setting things up like this and feeding all of our individual tracks out to an aux, in this case, it gives us more, uh, more options, right? Than committing to something like we did with the snare or the kick, for example. Now, this is not always a good thing. There's actually a thing called overchoice, uh, the paradox of too many choices and too many options. And what can happen is you actually have, you know, you can have so many options available to you that you don't get anything done or you don't make a choice. I mean, marketers know about this, for example. If, if something has too many options and there's too many choices, that might just ignore it, not make the purchase, and just, you know, forget about it. Same thing happens here in our DAWs because modern DAWs give us so many options and there's so many plugins out there and we have every option available. And actually, whenever you have too many options, at least the average person who has too many options, it can actually prevent you from getting anything done because you don't want to make a mistake, right? You're so, you don't want to make, you don't want to commit things to tracks because what if you make a mistake and you want to go back later on and that actually stops you. And a lot of people don't get mixes done. They never finish a song. They never finish a, a mix or a master because you have so many options, right? But, you know, but... Uh, in this case, I think having extra options is uh, is a good thing. However, you need to consider whenever you're mixing, like how many options do you really need? Do I need to bust all of my snare tracks out to an aux so I have tons of options later on? Or is having too many options actually going to slow me down and just give me too many choices later on? It's a good idea to commit to things. Go ahead and commit to it and go with it and don't give yourself too many options. However, you know, being that, uh, you know, creators have different brains and different brain systems, you know, we can do better with more choices, but don't give yourself too many choices. Because again, in psychology, that's, that's shown that people with too many choices are actually less happy and get less things done because you just have too many options that over choice, the paradox of uh, too much choice. However, again, in this case, I think we need, uh, I think we need the choice because I might want to go back and EQ some of these toms a little bit uh, differently. All right. But for now, let's just work on this. Go ahead and load up our plugin. Pop it on to toms. So immediately there's a difference. All right, bypass. Put it on kick, maybe. We're going to put it on toms. And go ahead and mix this here. Let's grab, say, from here to here. 
so we can have all of these toms sound like uh, one unit. Pull in our input a bit. Oh, there's good. On the low end, that's really subby, really, really low there. For this track, all right, that's pretty good there. Treble. Kind of like top on that. Of course, we have our presets if you want to use those. Reset that. Pull this back up about where we had it and lower on top. Pull this in a bit more. Pretty good. Compress it for sure. Really high gate. It's cutting off those tom hits really quick. I don't want that. I want them to ring out. Maybe just a bit there. And a little bit, I think, on club, I think. Pull our input down a little. There we go. All right. And because I have all of the toms running through this one aux, I'm going to adjust the volume of all of them, the overall mix, with just uh, one control. Okay, so if you come down here, I'm going to look at some of these uh, overheads here and see what we got here. Pull more of that out. Just some of this here. There we go. Much better. So now we have our snare and our kick and our toms pretty much mixed already. If I bypass that, turn it back on. There we go. Coming along nice, so let's go ahead and move on to the hi-hat. Now in this case, the hi-hat is on its own track. I don't have it routed uh, to the symbols. I don't think I did. Let me actually see this here. Okay, so this is on its own track. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the CLA plugin. Drums, mono to stereo in this case. 
put this on cowbell. Solo it for now. Don't want any delay on that, but we could use it if we wanted to. All right, obviously that's too much in most cases anyway. Kind of a cool effect. might dial a little bit in but a tiny tiny bit in this case I want to pull some of that out I'll go with the uh, roof there don't really need to compress it and the tiniest bit of reverb so bypass it turn it on just clean it up a little bit a little more sparkle on the uh, top end there but I think that's pretty pretty good there then I need to pan the hi-hat, of course, so I'll make sure it's panned over. All right. Now on the cymbals, I believe I've already mentioned I had all of those panned correctly, and those are all on one track. So let's go ahead and work with this now. Same stuff, waves and CLA drums. Now you may not have a uh, cymbals track, you might just have overheads, but we have the direct cymbals as well. So put it on cowbell, solo it for now, come up here. Gonna take this lower and pull it down actually and pull the top up go to roof I think yeah a little bit more sparkle on the uh, top end there all right so there is uh, the symbols bypass it Back on. Right here, that bypassed. And back on. Right. A little bit more clarity. It's the only thing I've really done there. Pull the overall output down and hear that. Okay, now on to all of the overhead and rooms. Now in this case, I have a full ambient mix right here that I could use, which is all of the different channels already bounced down to this one track, or we could do what we did previously and we could uh, you know, bust everything out to an aux or two. We have, here's our overheads right here. And I think all of these are different room channels. Let me solo this here. It's our ambient mix. So here's the full. All right, so what I'm gonna do is in this case, I'm gonna take my overhead here. Let me change the color of this. I'll make it yellow just so it looks different. I'm going to put an overhead right on the uh, right on the overhead. So grab our plugin, go to overheads, right there. All right, pull my gate down. So low end again. Set it on upper. Pull some out. A 
little bit of sparkle on that. Then compression, I don't think any. Make it more natural. Reverb. We could do it. But just the tiniest amount. And then the gate. Don't really need the gate at all, do we? All right, bypass. That's where we started. And on to this here. Right. So because our overhead, of course, has some bleed from toms and uh, and some kick and some snare in there a bit, I'm pulling out the low end to sort of emphasize the uh, cymbals because in this mix, I want it to be pretty direct because it's a uh, metal mix and... A lot of modern metal mixes don't have a ton of ambience. It's sort of, you know, obviously depends on what you like and what you're doing. But in this case, I want it pretty, pretty direct sounding. So there we go. Now on to the room. I'm just going to call all of these room microphones. Grab all of them. And I think what I'll do is the same thing we did for our toms in this case. So we'll hold down uh, shift alt and go ahead and put all of these to a new track. Call it Rooms. And Aux is fine and Stereo. Create that. Here's a Rooms. And in this case, I'm gonna hold down Alt, get that off. Put that right next to our overheads. And we'll make that red, red-ish. And we're gonna grab our plug in here. Put it over on rooms, bypass it for now. And also, let me do this here too. And shift select that, control alt shift, hit my solo. There we go, now I can solo this. So you might need to come through and do more mixing and panning and whatnot. Widen those out a bit. Come back here. Now we'll go ahead and turn this on. Already have it on rooms. Could put it on anything that we want, of course. This sounds better, right? Go to rooms, turn the gate down there. Now the rooms, what do I want for that? Well, Again, I don't want to pull all of the low end out, but I think I want to pull some of it out in this upper area. Because as you can hear that kick, I think we pull the most out here. So that it's a little better. I think in this case, bite works well. Just a bit on that. Press it some. So it just depends on the sound that you want. In this case, I'm going to leave compression on, but pull it uh, down some. Just to kind of mesh things together a bit. And we don't need the gate uh, at all. So just turn it off. Of course, that doesn't sound good. Okay, but I wanna pull as much into the plugin as I can and I'll adjust the overall level over here. Let's turn that down. Because that is the volume control for all of our rooms right here, just one track now. Now 
again, if I needed to, I could always come in here and put separate EQs or whatever effects I want on each, you know, on each different uh, track. If something was too, way too bright and having to control that in here for everything as one sort of subgroup or one multi-track, and maybe I have to pull it down, but then that affects everything else. Well, that's when you would come back to your individual tracks and you could EQ those uh, separately with whatever, you know, EQ you want. But I want more of a natural sound here, so I'm not really going to do anything other than use the uh, CLA on that. So let's come up here a bit. Take us off of solo. Now, it just depends on how much kick you like. I like a lot of kick because when it comes to those, you know, double and triple tracked guitars and some, uh, you know, weirdo screaming over top of it, uh, I really like the kick to sort of drive everything. You know, some people like to focus more on the snare. I like to focus more on the kick. That's just me personally, but, you know, do whatever you want. So I think we pretty much have this, don't we? So then, once we have that done, always a good idea to sort of glue things together. And for that, there's plenty of plugins that you could use. You could use, you know, uh, Ozone or, or the CLA mix down or something. I don't have that uh, right now. So I think what I'll do is, what do you say we put a SSL comp on this just to glue it together, put it on mastering just for a start. That's pretty much perfect, actually. Awesome. That preset actually worked uh, really well. And then I might add, again, it sort of depends on what you want to do. I might use uh, ozone on that, but being that we're focusing on waves uh, products here, I might use maybe the TG mastering console here. Come grab a preset if you want, but actually, I pretty much know what I need to do here. All right, so this doesn't have anything to do with the CLA plugin. But uh, let's just uh, do this real quick. So this low end, down the middle. I want that to hit a little harder, maybe a medium shape. Okay. And on the sides. a little out. I'm going to spread things open a bit. Then down the middle. Here, this really, really top end. Pull a little out. And then over here, top end, pull a little in, just to spread it open a little bit. Then you can do whatever else you want down the middle frequencies there. Cut some mud out of the sides. Already opened up. Now here, this frequency range, we can emphasize a click down the middle just a bit, All right? Okay. Bypass. Back on. A little bit clearer overall. 
Sounds much, much better now. Of course, come in here and mix your overall levels. That's without it on the kick. Comes right through now. Again, bypass. Back on. Snare. Bypass it on the snare. Back on. Comes through. We got a good, good smack on that. Just solo just that. In this case, I do want to EQ this a little bit. I guess we'll grab, oh, I don't know, Q10 works fine. And for now, I'm gonna put this on just the uh, master there. Control click that, there you go, solo that. Find that frequency I don't like, pull some out. change this shape here. Pull in some more low end just on that one. Now we'll put this back to that there. There we go. All right, now they match up a little bit better. All right. That kick is just coming right down, man. Of course, if you like a lower kick, you can set it around there. But I like it up here. Snare is coming through nice and loud. Very good. So now I'll come back in here and make sure I grab all the tracks with CLA drums on them. There, there, there. Hi hat, toms, snare, and kicks. Of course, it would make more sense if I put all of those together, wouldn't it? But come back here, and we'll hit Shift A. That will bypass all of uh, all of those. Okay, so Shift A, all of them are on. Shift A, all of them are bypassed. So all bypassed now. All right, Shift A, all of them are on. Shift A, Shift A, back on. Much, much more powerful now. And all of that could have been done in about 10 minutes. Again, if you're not explaining uh, everything along the way. All right, again. Bypass everything. Still have the effects on the master, by the way. Those are still on. All right, everything back on. Boom. Snare comes right through now. Right now, it's kind of muted. Back on. Hit you right in the face now. Bypass. Back 
back on. You can get the Waves CLA drum plugin on its own, or you can get it as part of the CLA Signature Series. So that is the CLA drums plugin. Thank <laughs> you.